Welcome to Flipped Classroom. Today's lesson is a review of Volume 2 of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Chapter 11 is the marriage proposal. Uh, Mr. Darcy is very consistent with his character. He continues to be proud and aware of his social situation while he tries to make this marriage proposal. He even speaks very awkwardly of Elizabeth as being inferior and all of her family obstacles. And as he speaks this, look at his words because he's completely oblivious to the insults he's conveying by his words. But on the other side, though he does at first look consistent with his character, there is also some unlikely traits. For example, he's very cool and detached, yet in control. Um, he seems quite distraught and overwhelmed with emotions. This is very different than the Darcy that we see most of the time in the novel. So why would Elizabeth reject the proposal from Mr. Darcy? Well, she explains that the specific aspect of Mr. Darcy's character formed what she called the groundwork of disprobation. From the moment she met him, she's actually referring primarily to Mr. Darcy's pride, his arrogance, and what she refers to as, quote, selfish disdain from the feeling of others. You know, when Elizabeth further states that she could never accept a marriage offer from a man who destroyed her sister's happiness. So there she shows her family loyalty. But Elizabeth also dislikes Mr. Darcy due to the unkind behavior he had shown to Mr. Wickham. She cannot forgive his refusal to grant Mr. Wickham the living that the late Mr. Darcy had intended for him. So Elizabeth tries to rationalize her answer by showing she's taking the higher moral ground. In chapter 12, Darcy responds to Elizabeth. He tries to give the reasons why he tried to keep Bingley and Jane apart and argues that they were noble reasons. He didn't want his friend to enter into a marriage that was not based on deep and mutual love. In other words, he blames it almost on Jane as if it was her behavior that implied it wasn't genuine love and that Bingley was moving too fast in the relationship. Also, um, Darcy portrays Wickham in a very interesting way in his letter. He portrays him as headstrong and unreliable, ungrateful, definitely an excessive spender and gambler and womanizer. He even tells how he tried to elope with Darcy's younger sister and nearly ruined a reputation. So once again, Darcy defends his character in chapter 12 as if he has taken the higher moral road. Chapter 13 is definitely the turning point in the novel. Here, Elizabeth begins to reevaluate her friendship with Mr. Wickham. She admits to herself that her judgment of Mr. Wickham was probably premature and based solely on superficial encounters and observations. And she confesses that she didn't have enough knowledge of Wick Mr. Wickham's life from any other source than Wickham himself. She acknowledges that Wickham's behavior was at times imprudent, and his willingness to share so many intimate details about his disagreement with Darcy to herself when they had scarcely met was really a breach of social decorum. Elizabeth chides herself for having been too trusting, for not having noticed Mr. Wickham's socially unacceptable behavior. She also admits that she failed to evaluate his mercenary spirit specifically using as evidence of his sudden attachment to Mrs. King. So she realizes that her judgment was driven by first impressions and hasty decision. Elizabeth has other epiphanies in chapter 13 as well. She admits that Jane's affections for Mr. Bingley probably were really difficult to detect. Um, she realizes that Jane's behavior was restrained and it really didn't encourage Mr. Bingley's advances. But most importantly, she understands that it was not Mr. Darcy or Miss Bingley who destroyed Jane's chances of marrying Mr. Bingley, but it was actually her mother and her sisters. She understands that Mr. Darcy's criticism of her family is probably justified. She feels very ashamed and humiliated when she considers how her own reputation must suffer because of the foolish behavior of her mother and her sisters. And though Elizabeth doesn't quite admit it to herself, Chapter 14 she clearly is in love. She now has to admit that Mr. Darcy is a respectable man, that she does feel compassion for having disappointed and destroying his hopes.
You know, Elizabeth feels that he unjustly criticized her connections during his proposal. But she can't deny the fact that her family is indeed a disgrace. So she really starts to develop a sincere affection for Darcy, even if she's not able to admit it to herself fully. After 15 and 16, the audience gets to see what Elizabeth does with her new knowledge. First of all, she hesitates to tell Jane about Mr. Po Mr. Darcy's proposal and the letter while both of them are in London. The most likely reason is she's still trying to um, protect Jane. She fears that Jane might be really upset to hear that Mr. Bingley doubted her affections, and that's the reason he distanced himself for her. He also, she also now, because with her background knowledge of Mr. Wickham, has a new perspective of the likely reasons that he and Miss King are no longer in a relationship. She remembers that Mr. Wickham's very fickle in his attachments, and everything he does is driven by financial necessity. The other possible reason is that someone possibly influenced Miss, Miss King, and told her about Wickham's reputation. Either one, those are likely reasons that the relationship has ended, according to Elizabeth. In Chapter 17, Jane and Elizabeth finally get some time to talk together. And that conversation reveals that Jane really believes that Mr. Darcy must have been particularly disappointed because he wasn't sure that Elizabeth would return his affection and accept his proposal, and he was not prepared for rejection. So Jane really empathizes with how he would feel. Also, Elizabeth and Jane believe that Mr. Darcy has not authorized them to make the information they know about Mr. Wickham public. So Jane also hopes that Mr. Wickham might have come to regret his past behaviors and a public revelation of his past deeds might ruin his chance to repent and reestablish his positive reputation. And all these comments by Jane really show that she believes there's good in everybody. She wants to give him a chance to change. She doesn't want to be the person who thwarts that opportunity. As the final two chapters of Volume 2 come to a close, we see Lydia is getting ready to go to Brighton. This is going to foreshadow Wickham's interactions with Darcy. We also see how Elizabeth's views of her father and her family have changed. She sees their ineffective parenting, and she worries about their reputation of a parent that would allow Lydia to go to a place with all these soldiers. Um, we really see her tone of distrust when she speaks to Wickham, but when Wickham talks with Elizabeth, his tone is more of fear of being discovered, that his secrets are going to get out. In chapter 19 is a continuation of this. She criticizes her father, saying, you know, you should not have exposed his wife to the contempt of his own children. In other words, she acknowledges that her mom's foolish, but she also puts some of the blame on the father for allowing this to happen. She really wishes that her father had taken a more active role in controlling his daughters. In chapter 9, we also see that Elizabeth goes is intending to go to Derbyshire, which is very near Pemberley, which of course is where Darcy lives. And she does not want to accidentally bump into him. This does foreshadow that Elizabeth actually will encounter Darcy on his home territory, where the situation clearly will be different. This is how Volume 2 concludes. Thank you for joining me today for Flipped Classroom.